The other day I posted in my stories how I took Lyric to the park after she was repeatedly jumping from the windowsill to the couch and driving me nuts. And a follower asked me in my stories, do you feel like you are rewarding bad behavior in that instance? I think it's a, a great question that I can't answer like in a simple message, which is why I wanted to do it here. Our country um, tends to put everything, Western society tends to put everything in black and white. It's either good and bad, it's either a punishment or a reward or an incentive. Um, and outside of that, when things fall outside of those very clear lines of it either being good or bad, we tend to get confused or it doesn't make sense. To be clear, I don't put any of my daughter's behavior into a good or bad category. It's desirable or undesirable because that's coming from me. Like it's something I want her to do or something I don't want her to do. Um, when she's doing it, she's not thinking about me. And that's the thing that we tend to take our kids' behavior very personally. Like I told you not to do that and you did it anyway, that's bad. And, um, or I told you to do this and you did it, good job. Now you're pleasing me. And if you put all of your child's behavior and make it all about you, it's going to be very difficult to understand that it's not about you. Their behavior is not about you. Their behavior is communicating something to you. And generally my response is that one, if they're doing something that is undesirable, one, did I ever teach them how it should be done? Two, um, what is the need that's not being met here that I can fulfill? The other thing is don't expect that because you have taught it or said it one time that it's going to be mastered immediately. Their brains are still under development. The prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for logic and reasoning is still developing well into your 20s. So. The thing is with toddlers, they are struggling with impulse control. They do not have the strength yet or the rational uh, capacity to say that, ah, this thing that looks so tempting to me or this thing that I'd like to try is so tempting that I'm, but I'm not gonna do it because it'll make mom upset. And I'm not gonna do it because it's dangerous. They don't have the ability to make decisions like that yet. Um, and. We don't either, even, even if you're older than your mid twenties and have a fully developed um, brain, you still don't always do exactly the things that you know you should do. Let's just say in terms of eating, right? You might uh, have a sweet tooth that hits you at night and you get ice cream or cookies and eat more, way more than you should. And you know the consequences of that could be ruining your diet or you know that it could be adding weight that you already have um, that would escalate some situation that you already have going on. But sometimes many of us still do it. And what's going to help us in those moments is not being yelled at, is not being hit, is not being shamed, is not being punished, right? We have fully developed brains and we still sometimes don't always make the best choices, but somehow we expect that kids who are working on developing impulse control should be able to control those impulses for things that are super interesting to them just simply because we don't want them to do it. Um, again, it's not about you. So in this situation, I know that my three-year-old, an extremely active toddler, needed to move. I did not fill that need, fulfill that need all day long. We were inside just because I didn't want to go out because it was kind of just dreary out. Um, and so she decided to meet her own need. And she didn't say to me, Mom, you know, I have a strong desire for movement. I really need to go outside. She doesn't have the ability to say that um, yet. Although she might say, I want to go to the park or whatever. But... She doesn't necessarily know that that's why she's like literally bouncing off the walls. Um, but I had to look to see the, what that behavior was communicating. The repeated jumping over and over again was telling me she needed to move. So I responded to the cause of the behavior. I didn't respond to the behavior. Responding to the behavior would have led to a whole battle and I would have responded to the behavior of her not stopping because it was unsafe. And even though I told her not to, um, ignoring the fact that 
her behavior was communicating her need to move. So that is the difference. I don't think anything that my toddler or all of the other toddlers of the world who are jumping and bouncing off the walls, I don't think any of them are bad. I think that their bodies and their brains are telling them that they have to move. A lot of times they need to move to learn, they need to move to think, to clear their heads. That's how they function, that's where they are right now. And I responded to her need and I'm never gonna feel like I am rewarding um, something negative or reinforcing something negative when the initial act was not intentional and wasn't directed personally at me. She didn't feel like the park was a reward. She didn't feel like the jumping out of the window sill was a bad behavior. Um, we are the ones that think that. So I rethink everything. I look for the need and I meet it.